Hi there, I'm Emily Muehlstein with the Gulf of Mexico Fishery Management Council, and this is a public hearing video on Refish Amendment 36A, which considers making modifications to the commercial individual fishing quota programs. We are here because the council is considering making some modifications to both the red snapper and the grouper tilefish individual fishing quota programs. In this document, we will be addressing commercial hail-in requirement, uh, shares that are held in non-activated shareholder accounts, allocation retention before a quota reduction in a fishing year, and potentially adopting a dealer notification requirement. Now, if there are some potential modifications that you would like to see considered that are not included in this video and in this amendment, we are in the beginning phases of developing Amendment 36B, which addresses some of the other potential modifications to the IFQ program. So very quickly, the Red Snapper IFQ program was implemented in 2007, and the goals of that program were to reduce overcapitalization in the fishery and also to reduce those derby fishing conditions. The Grouper Tilefish Individual Fishing Quota Program was implemented in 2010. It had similar goals to the Red Snapper Program in that it wanted to reduce overcapacity and also prevent derby fishing, but this program also aimed to increase catch efficiency. So the Grouper Tilefish Program actually encompasses multiple species. There's a couple share categories. We have deep water grouper category, shallow water grouper, and a tilefish category as well as a gag category on its own and a red grouper category. So let's walk through the history that got us to where we're at right now with development of Amendment 36A and then subsequently the development of 36B in the near future. So each of the IFQ programs had to go under a five-year review after being implemented. The Red Snapper IFQ five-year review was completed in 2013 and currently the grouper tilefish review is happening and we expect it to be completed sometime this year. So after that red snapper five-year review took place, the Gulf Council decided to convene an ad hoc red snapper IFQ advisory panel. That group made some recommendations about how to modify the current structure of the IFQ program. So the council took those recommendations and developed Refish Amendment 36. It wasn't sort of broken up into these subparts yet, and that amendment only addressed changes to the Red Snapper IFQ program. After going out to scoping with that document, the council decided to do two things. The first thing they decided was to expand that document so that it included the Red Snapper IFQ program and also changes to the Grouper Tilefish IFQ program. And then this council also split the document into Amendment 36A, which we're addressing today, and 36B, which we will be addressing in the near future. So the council is considering Amendment 36A because they'd like to improve the performance of both the Red Snapper and the Grouper Tilefish IFQ programs. They'd also like to ensure that uh, we prevent overfishing, that we achieve optimum yield on a continuing basis, and that we rebuild the red snapper stock. We'll start with action one, which considers the commercial hail-in requirement. Right now, all commercially permitted reef fish vessels must hail out before taking a trip. All the commercial vessels that are landing IFQ species must hail in within three to 24 hours prior to landing. And during that hail-in, they have to provide their landing date and time their approved location of landing, the dealer with whom they will be landing, and the estimated pounds of each share category that they will be landing. In the Red Snapper five-year IFQ review, it was noted that potentially additional efforts might be necessary in order to deter fishermen from illegally landing IFQ species. So the council is considering making some modifications to that commercial hail and requirement. The first alternative is the no action alternative, and that would keep things as they are. The second alternative, which is the council's current preferred, would require all commercially permitted reef fish vessels landing reef fish to hail in. Now during that hail in, they would provide information on the species that are being landed, the date, the time, and the location of landing, and also provide their vessel identification number. The third alternative, would be that all commercially permitted reef fish vessels would hail in 
if they were landing any federally managed species. Now, when they hailed in, they would have to provide the same information, which would include species, date, time, and location of landing, and also a vessel identification number. So next we move to action two, which considers what to do with non-activated shareholder accounts. So shares were initially distributed through the IFQ program among historical participants in the fishery. There are non-activated IFQ accounts that initially received shares, but have never accessed those shares. The shares in those non-activated accounts prevent then the commercial quota from being reached. The council must decide what, if anything, to do with these non-activated shares. The first alternative is the no action alternative. The second alternative, which is one of the council's current preferreds, would return the shares that are in non-activated accounts for the Red Snapper IFQ program back to National Marine Fisheries Service. The third alternative, which is also a preferred alternative of the council, would return shares from the Grouper IFQ program in non-activated accounts back to National Marine Fisheries Service. And then we have some sub-options about when we want that share return to occur. So the council's current preferred would be options A and B, and the shares would be returned on the effective date of the final rule for this amendment. Options 2B and 3B would return the shares one year following the final rule implementation. Next, the council needs to figure out what to do with the shares if they select to return them to National Marine Fisheries Service. The first alternative is the no action alternative. The second alternative, which is the council's current preferred, would redistribute shares from each share category equally among all shareholders of that share category. Alternative three would redistribute shares proportionally according to the proportion of the shares held by shareholders of that share category at the time of redistribution. Or alternative four would redistribute shares equally from each share category to allocation only account holders with commercial reef fish permits and landings for 2015 for that share category but not related to other accounts with the shares. Moving on to action three, which considers retaining allocation before a quota reduction. So quotas have been increasing in the recent history, but there could be a case in which a quota reduction could occur for an IFQ managed species. Since allocation is distributed at the beginning of the year and participants begin to use the, or transfer their allocation immediately, it would not be possible for allocation to be retroactively withdrawn in the case that we do have a quota reduction mid-year. So the council is considering retaining allocation in a year before an expected quota reduction. The first alternative is the no action alternative, but that leaves us open to potentially exceeding an annual catch limit or catch target if a quota reduction occurs mid-year after we've already distributed annual allocation. The second alternative is the council's current preferred alternative, and that would allow the regional administrator to retain either red snapper or grouper tilefish annual allocation in a year when a commercial quota reduction is expected. Now, withheld annual allocation would be distributed to shareholders if the effective date of the final rule implementing the reduction had not occurred by, we have two options here, either June 1, which is the council's current preferred, or August 1. And finally, action four considers dealer notification to begin offloading. So right now, commercially permitted reef fish vessels that are landing IFQ species can land at any time. Offloading of those IFQ species must occur between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. So the council is considering requiring dealers to notify National Marine Fisheries Service when offloading IFQ species to improve law enforcement efforts. The first alternative, which is the council's no action alternative, is the current preferred. The second alternative, would require IFQ dealers to notify National Marine Fisheries Service when a vessel will offload species. 
The notification in this alternative must be made at least one hour and no more than 24 hours before offloading. Alternative three would require IFQ dealers to notify a National Marine Fisheries Service when a vessel will offload IFQ species as well. But in this case, the notification would have to be made three hours and no more than 24 hours before offloading. The Gulf Council would like to hear your thoughts on this amendment before taking final action in April. You can read the full document. You can also submit comments in one of two ways. You can either go to our online comment form and do it that way, or you can email us at golfcouncil at golfcouncil.org. Please submit your comments by March 28th in order to allow us to summarize them in front of full council before a final action is taken. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and let us know what you think about Amendment 36A.